the word for you today. Today we're going to be in the book of Daniel chapter 1 verse 8 through 16. And as you turn there, I want to tell you a little bit about where we are. Now, Daniel, the book is set during the exile to Babylon. It's where the Babylonians, uh, because of Israel's sin, uh, God used them to destroy Jerusalem. They came in in three waves and destroyed the city and took many of its inhabitants into exile in Babylon. And Daniel, he was one of those exiles. He and several other young men uh, his age who were, you know, they were handsome, they were smart, uh, they had no physical defects, they showed aptitude for learning. They were taken and they were chosen to enter the king's service. And so Daniel, at this time, in this chapter 1, he is in training in Babylon. And part of that training uh, was just teaching them languages, teaching them learning, preparing them for service. But while they were in this service, they had to eat the king's food and drink the king's wine. And it was great food, good meats, good wines. But doing that would have broken God's commands. It would have broken the dietary laws that God had given his people. And so what we see, and I'm going to read it here in just a moment, we see a little insight into what's important to Daniel. We see a little insight into where his priorities are, even in this difficult circumstance that he's in. So let's read that together. Verse 8. But Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine. He asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself in this way. Now God had caused the official to show favor and compassion to Daniel. But the official told Daniel, I'm afraid of my lord the king, who has assigned your food and drink. Why should he see you looking worse than, any other, uh, than the other young men your age? The king would then have my head because of you. Verse 11. Daniel said to the guard whom the chief official had appointed over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Please, test your servants for ten days. Give us nothing but vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then compare your, our appearance with that of the young men who eat the royal food, and treat your servants in accordance with what you see. So he agreed to this and tested them for ten days. At the end of the ten days, they looked healthier and better nourished than any of the young men who ate the royal food. And so the guard took away their choice food and the wine they were to drink and gave them vegetables instead. Now, when we look at scriptures like this, what I'm kind of trying to find is the heart of it. It's the most important piece of it. And we could talk about you know, how uh, God influenced the official to like David or Daniel. We could talk about how Daniel uh, kind of used his wits to find a way to be obedient to the Lord. But I think the heart of this passage is showing what Daniel's priority was, showing where Daniel's heart was. See, Daniel, he was just ripped from his homeland forced into the service of a foreign king in a foreign land. It means he has no idea what's going on and that he's having to learn a new language in a very strange and crazy place. He's watching his people enslaved and exiled, destroyed. He's, he, his own life is on the line because disobedience to the king was death. And as he is experiencing all of this, as he's forced into this service, the thing that is the priority on his mind, the thing that he will not defy is God. He must obey the Lord. And there's a word that says he resolved or he purposed. And this idea is he has set his heart. This idea he set his heart on not defiling himself, specifically David, Daniel, I keep saying David, it's Daniel, I promise. Daniel set his heart on obedience. Daniel is not in any position of power. Going against the system could kill him. But obedience 
to God, obedience to God's word was more important to him than anything else. Now, in John 14, 15, Jesus is speaking to his disciples and he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Another way to say that is if you love me, obey my commandments. The way that we as followers of Jesus show our love to God is by obeying what He says. I read a, it was a story about how they used to train Arabian horses. Now, they were horses that were used in the deserts of Arabia. Like, your life was dependent upon this horse. And so, the obedience that they required from these horses was insane. Uh, the training was pretty much beyond the endurance of any living thing. Um, the trainers would force the horses to train for a couple of days without water. Now, a horse can go about five days without water. And so they train for several days, they give the horse no water, and then they put out water and they let the horse loose. And of course, the horse does what anybody who's thirsty would do. They sprint towards the water, get right to the edge, and just as they're about to plunge in and drink the water, the trainer will blow a whistle. And they know if a horse is completely trained because right before it drinks the water, it will stop and return to the trainer. Now, what the trainer, the trainer wanted was perfect, complete obedience. They wanted to be sure that at the signal, no matter what the conditions were, no matter how severe the desert of Arabia was, that this horse was going to obey because their lives depended on it. Now, when I was looking at this, it reminded me of how we are to set our hearts on obedient, being obedient to God. See, those horses, no matter the circumstance, no matter how they felt, no matter how thirsty and in need they were, they were obedient to the Lord because, or obedient to the trainer because it was the right thing to do. Now, us as followers of Christ, as followers of God, like Daniel was, no matter the circumstances we're in, we need to be obedient to God. Like Daniel did, we need to set our heart, purpose our lives. We have to choose, no matter what happens, no matter where I am in life, no matter what I'm going through, no matter what I want to do, I'm going to be obedient to God's Word. And so when we read this scripture and we look at this devotion, ask yourself, are you going to set your heart on obedience? Are you going to choose right now to do what the Lord says when the moment comes? The beautiful thing, when we choose beforehand, when we have already decided that we're going to obey the Lord, when the time comes and it's time to do it, the decision is already made. So after you watch this video, take a moment and pray. Would you tell the Lord, I want to set my heart on obeying you. I want to show you love by my obedience to your commands. Have a great day.